Alright guys, so the last method I want to add to this little class is just a method to print out the database as a string just so we have something to display for this example and this isn't even really part of the tutorial I just want to uh, do this real quick so we'll say print out the database as a string alright so public string database to string sounds like a good name for it and what is this give me that is because I named it products alright so that was annoying me alright so anyways to print out the database as a string we probably need a variable to save it in again I'm just gonna do this real quick so try to explain everything though alright now we need a reference to the database and how about that reference looks good alright now we need a query to query the entire database so string query set this equal to select all from why are you not in where you're supposed to be select all from the table and the table is table products where hmm, pretty good might as well just copy that whole thing alright so the query to select all the data is select star this means everything from this table where one one also means um, every condition is met. So this means select every column and this means select every row. Alright, so now that we have a query, again, this tutorial doesn't really deal with cursors or anything, but just so I don't leave you guys hanging, um, a cursor is going to point to a location in your results. So just think of it like a pointer, where if this was the first row, then it would point to here. If it was the second row, it would point to here. It's just so Android can manage um, where you are in your results and what you want to print out and everything like that. And the object for that is C. And if you just call it DB raw query, then you can pass your query and no. So now we have a pointer and to move it to the very first location, move to the first row in. Again, so this is a cursor and the results that it is pointing to is the results of this query and to move it to the very beginning we just call move to first on it. Not really important but you know. Now what I want to do is I want to say while not c dot is after last And I'll explain this in just a second, guys. So get string, and in the parameter here, get column index, and the index is product name, and make sure that this is not equal. No. All right. So what this is pretty much saying is the C, which is your cursor, is after last you want to make sure that it's not positioned after the last row this is essentially saying make sure that you still have some results to go when you're done parsing through all of the results of course I guess we can just end this now It'll probably makes sense if you just close your database and since this method needs to return a string we're just gonna return the database string so of course this is essentially gonna loop through each row in your database so every time we loop through a row we just want to tack on some information on the string that we're gonna return because the string that we return is gonna be printed out right here so again I know this is a real quick one too but this is kind of like extra um, bonus stuff for your tutorial so in order to add stuff onto the string plus equals C the cursor get string and this is C dot get column index product name and then DB plus equals and I just want to bump it on to a new line and that is because this is not a string alright 
So in order to get, let's say we had three um, different products. So we would have three different rows. Each of those products would have an ID and a name. So it would be like apples, bacon, and cats. Say that it was the weirdest store in the world. All this would do is it would loop through all the results in your table, every single product, and every time it did, it extracted the name of that product and it added it to the string. And this just makes it on a new line because if we didn't, then it would just say like apples, bacon, cats, and it would all run on one single line and it would look kind of weird. So again, this is what all this is doing. Let me clean this up a little bit and all right, looks good to go. So now the only thing that we have left to do is we need to hop back in main activity and we can actually delete both of these right there and we just need to make it so the interface right here can interact with this database handler. Pretty simple so we'll actually do that in the next tutorial.